Tonight, we're going to take a look at the role of the Central Intelligence Agency in sponsoring false flag operations. In particular, we will be examining Operation Gladio, a Cold War era black op orchestrated by the CIA who launched terrorist attacks in Italy and throughout Europe in order to blame leftist communists. The chosen targets were usually public places in order to create maximum impact. Bombs were planted in banks, in railway stations and trains, and snipers fired at will into innocent crowds of peaceful protesters or weekend shoppers simply out buying groceries. It was a slaughter of the innocents, and the United States, working through the CIA and secret war departments of NATO, carried out a long series of false flag terror attacks throughout the European continent to meet its own political ends. And with us now to help break this all down is a proficient expert in Operation Gladio, Richard Cottrell. He is a veteran European television journalist who specializes in politics and economics. He is a regular contributor to the National ITV Network and the author of Gladio, NATO's Dagger at the Heart of Europe, the Pentagon Nazi Mafia Terror Access. And he joins us now from just outside of Venice, Italy. Richard Cottrell, welcome to the program. Thank you very much indeed. Hey, right out of the gate, let's start out with uh, the evidence that we have that supports that Operation Gladio actually existed. Because unfortunately, in America, a lot of people are going to take one glimpse at Gladio and immediately dismiss it as a crazy conspiracy theory. So what kind of evidence do we have that supports that Gladio did indeed exist? Well, solid and documentary evidence, actually. Uh, first of all, we must explain that the secret army units, which became known as Gladio, uh, took their title from a secret army unit which was established in Italy. Uh, all these organizations were set up by the North Atlantic Treaty, Treaty Organization. And the original idea was that these would be sleeping soldiers who, in the event of a Soviet invasion of Western Europe, would lurk behind nourished by secret uh, arms dumps where they could cause havoc among the invading Soviet troops. This was an idea of Churchill's, actually, uh, which dates a long way back to the Boer War, which he covered as a, as a correspondent for London newspapers. But it was revived uh, both during the war and after the war as a way of resisting uh, invaders from the East. So we know perfectly well from many books other than those written by me that the Gladio secret or army organizations were real, that they were established by NATO with the encouragement of Western intelligence agencies, including, as you just mentioned, uh, the CIA, but also the intelligence agency agencies of every single uh, member state of NATO, and even some countries which were not members of NATO, such as Switzerland and Sweden, who were actually ghost members of the alliance. And that's another story in itself. So there's no real dispute that these organizations existed. What actually happened was uh, a warp in their activities. Uh, there was a problem, because the United States of America, particularly supported by the United Kingdom and some other countries, wanted the Cold War to continue. Uh, they wanted to create uh, the mirage of a terrorist threat uh, inspired by Moscow in Western Europe in order to justify massive arms spending. And you won't have to look very far beyond the American military industrial complex. Well, I was just going to gonna say this, this reminds me of uh, Ike's farewell address to the nation where he warned of Indeed. the impending military Indeed. industrial complex. So Indeed. do you think this was a direct result of that? Because it looks like it started out with good intentions. I mean, I, don't, yeah. I see nothing wrong with, um, you know, leave behind NATO's stay behind yeah. armies in case of a, a total yeah. invasion by the Soviet Union. So where did they go wrong? Was it the infiltration by the CIA and the military? military industrial complex, is that where it started to go uh, south? I think you've got to ask yourself a question here about General Lyman Lemnitzer. Uh, Lemnitzer, who, the, the author of the famous Northwoods project, uh, was fired by Kennedy, effectively sacked, uh, because, as I state in my book, he looked as though he was sailing pretty close to creating a military coup in Washington to overthrow the government. So Kennedy decided on a constructive dismissal. 
It was Lemnitzer more than any other figure who is responsible for warping the NATO secret armies into instruments of terror performed against civilians, not against uh, Russian invaders, not against any form of military personnel, but just civilian citizens themselves, walking about the streets, minding their own business, catching trains, drinking beer uh, in the beer fest, whatever. All of this flowed from the warped mind or possibly the biggest psychopath who has ever ruled over the kingdom of the Pentagon. Well, and I agree with you, and I think it's important that when, whenever we discuss Operation Gladio, we, we have to discuss uh, Operation Northwoods as well, yes. because I mean, they're both false flag events. One of them was you know, Northwoods being a proposed false flag event, but uh, mm -hmm. they both have been completely ignored by the mainstream media. I'm yeah. going to be labeled as a conspiracy theorist just for bringing it up, but... Uh, Northwoods, like Gladio, cannot be denied because the Northwoods document right. is a live, living, breathing document that exists in the National Security Archive, and it reveals that in 1962, the U.S. Department of Defense signed off on a covert plan to stage terrorist attacks on American soil and blame Cuba. So uh, tell us more about Operation Northwoods for those who might not be familiar with it. Well, this was March 1962 when Lemnitzer, who wrote the document, uh, sent it to the Kennedy's office, actually, with the idea that the Pentagon could stimulate an artificial war against Cuba. In order to do this, uh, he required some kind of s sense of alarm, an emergency within the United States itself. So he cooked up the idea of hiring crooks and hoodlums to shoot at Americans going about their everyday business, blow up airliners, attack ships, and generally create the atmosphere of a communist attempt to disturb the peace and serenity of the United States of America. Now, this happened in March 1962, when General Lyman Lemnitzer got to NATO as Supreme Allied Commander, which was a demotion for him, and a monstrous insult to his huge personality. He exactly followed the Northwoods program. He transferred it exactly to Europe and then began what is known in this country as the Anni di Piombo, or more widely, the Years of Lead, which tortured European citizens for the next 20 years. And it was simply a rerun of the Cuban fiasco. In order to justify an invasion of Cuba, he would create terror in the United States. In order to create the unrealistic nonsense of a Russian attempt to invade Europe, he created the machinery which would create mayhem among European citizens and convince them that the Reds were just under the bed. This was, this was the same game. There was no difference. They were a horse and carriage out of the same stable. <laughs> Well, I mean, this guy should be known historically as someone every bit as evil as, as Osama bin Laden, you know. But, yeah. um, you know, uh, he... Uh, he had a cocky uniform on that makes a difference. Absolutely. And and I'm curious is how did Lemitzer go from Northwoods, which was rejected in America, to Operation Gladio, which was implemented uh, throughout Europe? Well, a, a couple of things happened here, which were of great importance. Uh, JFK, a person I greatly admire, and I, I, I certainly <laughs> confess that freely. I think he was one of the greatest statements uh, that, that America has ever produced. Well, I agree with you there. Uh, and now, K Kennedy was extremely intelligent. And from the moment he came to office, he realized that Lemnitzer was dangerous. He was one of the very few who did. He realized that the Pentagon was out of control. I mean, Arthur Schlesinger has long since said, when he was asked you know, during the Kennedy years, uh, what was your biggest problem? And he said, we weren't in control of the Joint Chiefs. The Joint Chiefs. Chiefs, yep. Yeah, and the Joint Chiefs were headed by Lyman Lemnitzer. There were a couple of books written about that time, uh, which indicated the idea was present in, in media minds that... There were dirty tricks going on in the Pentagon, and there might be a plot to overthrow the 
the JFK uh, presidency and possibly go beyond that. In well, I know. I, mean, I was just going to say you're people. the only author, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but you're the only author that I know of so far that suspects Lyman Limitzer may have some sort of connection to the JFK assassination. And, and I think uh, for good reason. I mean, he certainly had the motive and yeah. uh, he fits the profile. Uh, the profile. What do you think his connection is to the JFK assassination? I think he organized it. Wow. I think he was the mastermind of the entire operation. There's a little, a little bit of interesting background about this. Um, the Pentagon and the CIA had a bad falling out over Zapata, sometimes known as the Bay of Pigs, inaccurately. Uh, Lemnitzer displayed his traditional attitude of playing one side against the other. Uh, he had fallen out with the CIA for all kinds of reasons, stretching back to Vietnam. And he encouraged them to go into the swamp with the nasty crocodiles and other reptilian creatures waiting for them so that he could cut the CIA down to size. But then, as soon as he realized that he himself was in difficulty with Kennedy, he patched up the quarrel. And the CIA and the Pentagon, led by Lemnitzer, cooked up the plot to kill Kennedy. I have no doubt of this, and I state it quite clearly in my book. I'm the only person you correctly say ever to point this out. But my question is, why has nobody else ever pointed out? This was a man who suffered the huge humiliation of being sacked as the U.S. General uh, Chief of Staff. He was denied his due second term of office. Never happened before. This was a very arrogant and proud man. He was raised to the pinnacles of military success by Eisenhower himself. Uh, he owed his entire rise uh, in military circles entirely to the benevolence of Eisenhower to outrage this man who considered Kennedy to be not a communist, but certainly a communist sympathizer, was asking for trouble. This was a man who was going to hire hoodlums and criminals to shoot Americans in the street. Who killed Kennedy in Dallas that day? Hoodlums and criminals, exactly the kind of people that the Pentagon and the CIA has continually worked with over the years. Well, I agree with you. And Northwoods and Gladio clearly demonstrate his total lack of morality. I mean, he, he routinely hired the mafia to reach you know, his objectives. He, yeah. he planned to unleash terror attacks, as you were saying, yeah. inside the United States. So he was going to kill yeah. innocent civilians so, so he could have his way with Cuba, an act that probably would have launched the U.S. into World War III with Russia. So who knows how far that would have gone. And look, this guy hired and worked with Nazi war criminals. He orchestrated yeah. the you know, assassinations of, of political leaders, helped install ruthless dictators, you name it. So I guess it's safe to say that he was uh, purely capable of murdering the president well he tried very hard to murder the president of france uh general charles de gaulle on at least seven occasions uh some of these predated uh his appointment as supreme commander of allied forces europe but thereafter he pulled the plug out trying to kill de gaulle and it's really quite miraculous that he didn't actually get away with it in the end and I don't know why that reason, why that is, but he failed to kill the girl. But the fact that he wanted to tells us that he would have no compunction at all about killing the United States of America, whom he once described as no kind of war hero, just a patrol boat captain who bobbed about in the sea somewhere. Wow, unbelievable. And well, you know, I want to get back to, to more of the evidence that we have that Gladio did indeed exist. You know, high, the highest levels of the Italian government, for example, uh, they have gone public admitting that uh, Operation yeah. Gladio targeted innocent well, civilians. I, I, uh, yeah. November 2nd, 1990, the European Parliament had a resolution condemning the activities of Operation Gladio. Then there's yeah. the uh, former Italian intelligence chief. He has come clean concerning Gladio. So, you know, many other countries have also declassified documents. Yeah. So it is part of the public record. The United States government, along with other Western governments, deliberately targeted uh, innocent mm -hmm. civilians. They targeted trains, bus stations, schools. Yeah. They killed innocent children in order to get the public to yeah. release relinquish their uh, liberties. And, um, you know, 
I know this is hard for a lot of people to believe. I wish it wasn't true, but we got to face the facts. We got to deal with it. And what about you, Richard? Do you find that a lot of people have a hard time accepting this? Oh, absolutely. By the way, you mentioned the European Parliament just now. I'm myself a poor, former member of the European That's Parliament. That's right, yeah. Uh, and I, I'm coming in for a lot of stick because I was a conservative and for a conservative European MP to take this approach towards NATO, shall we say, slightly unusual. Yes, I think the problem is that people are closing their minds and they too easily believe that um, good is good. By this, I mean that the North Atlantic Treaty Organization is like the Salvation Army you know, or some sort of organization of this kind. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization is an offspring of the uh, military industrial complex. It needs to survive. In order to survive, it has to manufacture fears and risks. And this is why, uh, this is the point that I want to make fairly quickly now, and this is why Gladio, which is a, a trademark and a brand, is continuing. You know, we're not talking about history here. We're talking about something which is happening, even as we are sitting here having this discussion now. This is what I call Newtonian terrorism. One reaction is intended to cause another equal and opposite reaction. You stage a terrorist event, and so you convince people that it must be real. You know, the, these people really did blow up the underground trains in London and Madrid and wherever else. But where, the real evidence points to the hands of public authorities in this affair. Well, absolutely. Not a, a and, and, and of Pakistanis go with some chemicals you know, amounting to little more than fireworks, which they could have bought in Boots the Chemist. What were some of the worst uh, uh, terrorist attacks that were carried out, you know, the worst terror attacks on record that were carried out by Gladio? Well, it depends what you mean by worst terrorist attacks. I mean, there were selective assassinations, for example, of Aldo Moro. Uh, the former Italian prime minister, yep. who had the temerity to propose a compact between the Christian uh, Democrats and the communists, the so-called historic uh, compromise. He died <laughs> not long afterwards. He was snatched from his car uh, on the way to parliament to propose that the Italians should bury the hatchet and, and try to come together and, and, and form a, some, some kind of consensus government which would last for the future. He was murdered for this purpose. The so-called Brigati Rossi. Uh, the Red Brigades were blamed for this. It was nothing to do with them at all. Uh, this was a, a crime uh, caused by Western intelligence in uh, cohorts with NATO, with neo-Nazis and a, a Roman uh, criminal gang. I don't mean Roman criminal gang of the past. I mean the one that was living around in Rome at that time. <clears throat> and this is very interesting because it once again shows the historiography here that Gladio always will work with extremist organizations, always neo-Nazis, and they have no compulsion at all about working with the mafia and criminals. Well, and we've been showing some video, I've noticed, about the uh, Bologna massacre that, was, that yeah. occurred on August 2nd, 1980. A uh, bomb went off in the central station uh, of Italy, which, you know, I guess it killed 85 people, wounded more than 200. And it was so horrific that it caused certain members of the Italian uh, officials to break their silence on this and expose the operation. What are some of the more prominent public figures who have come forward to expose this? Well, I'm, I'm sorry to say relatively few. Um, I can just imagine. Just Bologna for a moment. Um, this was immediately brain, blamed by uh, Francesco Cosiga, who was the president of Italy at the time, on the Red Brigades. Now, as the president of Italy, he had formerly been one of the founders of the Gladio Secret Army. This, this story didn't last 24 hours before it was discovered uh, that the bomb had been planted by a right-wing uh, political force, underground political force, with strong ties to Italian and Western uh, intelligence quarters. And the object of the exercise was, as usual, to terrify Italians with the idea, the notion that uh, the terror was in their midst. It wasn't uh, something distant or far away, but there were evil people uh, surrounding them in their daily lives who would create awful atrocities of this kind. In fact, it was performed by a bunch of neo-fascists. 
Well, uh, again, you know, there's been a total media blackout on this subject in the United States. In fact, you know, I know that the, the BBC, they produced a documentary about yeah. Gladio in the early 1990s uh, yeah, that, uh, that yeah. Yeah, never aired in the United States. In fact, we are unable to purchase the DVD. Google even blocked the video on the Internet. So, uh, you know, it's very tough to access this information. However, at the same time, um, you know, word is still getting out. Thank, you know, thankfully for people like you who are writing books about this, other whistleblowers. And um, the other night, Alex Jones on national television on CNN, the Piers Morgan show, well, mm -hmm. um, he talked about Gladio on, the, uh, on CNN. Let's take a look at that clip. Who do you believe is behind this? I have the proof. I heard him on CBS Who? Radio. Oh, Alex. They announced they blew up the towers on CBS Radio. Who do you believe? New Yorkers all saw it and heard it. Alex, who do you they believe? They blew up Building 7. Alex, who do you believe was behind it? The American government. Criminal elements of the military industrial complex, the same ones that staged Gulf of Tonkin, mm. the same ones that staged Operation, right. the mass shootings of Operation right. Gladio. Right. Ooh, do you, the CIA do you don't like this Alex, right Alex. now. <laughs> And of course, uh, since then, Alex has uh, been subjected to much ridicule and demonization for his comments on CNN. And you know that reminds me, you know, what what is the political climate like in in Europe? Are people able to freely talk about this? Is this an open discussion in the media, oh, or are you experiencing the same blackout there? <clears throat> absolutely. Um, Gladio here is something which is widely discussed, particularly in this country, of course, because we hold the copyright on it through the name of the, uh, uh, the Italian branch of the NATO secret army organization. But you, you speak of Americans not knowing things. I will tell you something else which is very interesting. We have a real live Ergenicon uh, organization, which is Gladio in Turkey. This is a secret um, deep state organization, Derin Devlet in Turkish, which has been plotting to overthrow uh, successive Turkish governments for many years now, and quite often succeeding and, and pulling it off. Now, this organization has been dragged into the uh, public glare as though the wreck of the Titanic had been pulled up from the bottom of the Atlantic and found to be in full working order. <laughs> it's an exact replica of Gladio. Now, what does this tell us? It tells us that Gladio is active, alive, working and plotting to this day. It is behind terrorist uh, atrocities which have been performed in Europe not 20, 30, 40 years ago, but which have been for performed within, shall we say, minutes in the historical record. This is the important thing to remember. All the time we keep talking about Gladio, something that happened in the past. It's a long time ago. Maybe we should bury it now. It's all uh, forgotten its history. It's not. This is an organization or an idea or brand or trademark, call it what you like, which is so useful, you cannot put it away. Well, and, and I was taking a look at your book, and you wrote in your uh, book, Gladio, the political system of the United States has a deceiving democratic and legal appearance on the surface, but in reality is now little different from any other dictatorial regime in the world. And you also said that the Gladio technique of undermining the state from within is far from over. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we see it here, unfortunately. In Italy, quite regularly, we had the destruction of the underground trains in London, and a year before that, uh, the atrocities performed upon the uh, Madrid railway system. We had the long series of tragedies uh, in Germany, the long German autumn, as it was called, in which many atrocities attributed to the Bader Meinhof gang were in fact conspired and organized by Western intelligence. And let me tell you another trick which goes on here. Most people will know of the Bader Meinhof gang, for example, and they probably may have heard, even in America, of the Red Brigades uh, here in Italy. Sure. What they don't know is that these organizations were manipulated and controlled by Western intelligence. In other words, you've got a sleeper planted inside, shall we say, the Red Brigades, uh, who would steer the Red Brigades into performing horrific and terrible acts. Uh, the Western intelligence uh, sleepers would also tell the authorities what these gangs were up to. And, of course, the Western authorities 
but simply sit on their hands and look the other way and wait to reap the propaganda harvest. Um, one thing we haven't mentioned yet, uh, which is perhaps the headline episode of uh, gladio-type terrorism here in Italy, was the attack on Pope Paul John II. Now, as you say, you've read my book, so you'll see what my conclusion there is. Mm -hmm. This was nothing whatsoever to do with the KGB. It was nothing whatsoever to do with the poor little Bulgarians. It was actually uh, a, conspiracy, a, a conspiracy in order to show the KGB in the worst possible light, the Russians in the worst possible light, capable of killing one of their own, a Slav, of course, because Pope John Paul was Polish, a Slav, for simple propaganda gains in order to continue the Cold War. Well, and, and that makes me think of the mass shootings. I'm sure that you're aware of the mass shootings yes, here mm -hmm. recently in the United States. And yeah. there are a lot of discrepancies and bizarre accounts in both the, you know, the movie theater shooting yeah. in Aurora, Colorado, and the yeah. Sandy Hook massacre in Connecticut. And I yeah. believe there is strong evidence that support a possible false flag event in both of those tragedies. We certainly know from history that our government is purely capable enough and evil enough to pull something like that off in order to take take away even more of our liberties. And as you know, the Obama administration and the controlled media is pushing for strict gun control as a result of the shootings. Now, do you think that they are barbaric enough to kill innocent children as an excuse to attack our Second Amendment? Yes. Will that do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, straightforward, uh, and you and me both. And um, well, I agree with you, and I, you know, I think that this book Gladio is instrumental in waking people up. It is an excellent read, and you are certainly a gifted writer. I highly recommend that people out there pick it up and read it because you know it contains a wealth of information on not just only the series of, of savage terror attacks by NATO and the CIA in Europe during the the last half of the 20th century, but it also includes insight on modern day terrorism, what we were just talking about, and it is yeah. escalating and it is carried out by the yeah. same corrupted individuals, am I right? Yeah, well think of the, the, the event on Utoya Island in Norway, Yeah. Um, possibly the worst uh, gladio type massacre of recent times. I've no doubt that the alleged uh, perpetrator, uh, Breivik, uh, is a patsy. Uh, th th this is something we also have to mention here that in any gladio terrorism, you must always come up with a patsy. These are the people that you can blame. If necessary, bring them up in court, stage show trials. Or and kill them. You can prove to people that these folk really were uh, responsible for these terrible deeds. It's always a patsy. There's always a Lee Harvey Oswald in this somewhere. A man with an ancient rifle sitting at the top of the Texas book depository can hit President Kennedy from an angle which I think even skilled sharpshooters would find very difficult indeed. So always you can find that intelligence organizations will find the patsies that they need in order to create the diversions which can then reap the harvest in turn of, of as you say, culling our personal liberties, destroying our democratic societies, and continuing uh, the warlike menace to our societies as a whole. Well, and that's because it works every time, but fortunately yeah. there is a mass awakening going on right now. So, you know, more and more people are learning about this. And, um, you know, we're almost out of time. You know, I want to thank you once again for joining us. Any last thoughts before we go? Well, what I, I found really in writing this book and talking to people uh, and introducing them to the idea was a general mood of complacency. Um, a lot of people would accept that what I was saying was, was correct, that I had produced the evidence and that it was overwhelming and condemned. But then you get the, the, the hands in the air thing. What can we do about it? This brings you to ask yourself, all of us, no matter where we live, how much can we trust the governments that we elect? How much can you trust the Congress of the United States of America? How much can the people of this country trust their parliament? Not very much. It's got 7% approval at the moment in the latest opinion poll. We have to change our attitudes away from militarism. This is basically the cause of all our problems. 
Well, you know, and that's the thing. And you say that seven percent approval rating. When are people going to wake up? Because seven percent approval rating, yet the same politicians keep getting elected oh, yeah. uh, back <laughs> into office. It's a charm circle, isn't it? Yeah, that's cr it's crazy. They pay huge amounts of money, so they have every reason to to continue the circus. I mean, we're watching the spectacle now of the tired old guy Berlusconi trying to become prime minister for the fourth time. There is some sign that this is not playing to the gallery, gallery of public opinion quite as he thought it would. There's a tired old guy who chases young underage girls. But the fact that he is still in the race, the fact that he can still run for office in this country tells you what is wrong. Well, that's right. Well, Richard Cottrell, we certainly appreciate your time. Uh, hope to have you back on the program in the near future. Thank you for joining okay. us today. All right, folks. Well, that was definitely an interesting conversation. Hey, don't forget that Gladio is available right now at InfoWarsShop.com. So I would highly recommend it. It's, it's a great read. Um, if you scam through my book, you could see I've got notes throughout the entire book. Uh, look at this, Marcos. When I mark something up like this, that means that it's a good read. All right. Look at this. Boom, boom. He talks about the strategy of tension. Uh, he calls the United States the glorious republic of Pentagonia. And um, anyway, it goes through, you know, it talks about the Kennedy assassination, modern day terrorism. It's all in here. It's an excellent read, so definitely check it out. And hey, that's going to do it for tonight's program. The InfoWars Nightly News will return, Lord willing, next Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Texas time, that is. So until then, have a blessed weekend. We'll see you back right here on Monday. Good night.